Hey, what's up, everybody? It's uh, Eric here, the Savage Outback, and uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today, something that I don't uh, traditionally do on YouTube, uh, which is kind of a DIY project here. And I'm going to talk to you about replacing the internal cartridge here on a Delta faucet. This is a 1300 slash 1400 or quote unquote 1314 series uh, single handle Delta faucet. So uh, my problem here with this faucet is that the shower drips. Okay, fortunately for me, it's a cold water drip, so it's not a it's not a super huge issue because it's a very slow leak at this point. Uh, you know, I've seen them real bad where these things drip, drip, drip. But um, if you got a hot water leak, certainly you're throwing money out the window. Um, what we're going to do is go into the breakdown of this faucet. I'm going to take it apart for you, show you step by step how to replace it. Some things that you're going to need to do the job, uh, which is pretty simple. Uh, you're going to need a, a, a standard Allen wrench. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver and a pair of channel lock pliers to get inside here and uh, replace the necessary parts. So inside the faucet, you have a cartridge. Uh, this uh, cartridge you can purchase uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot or any plumbing store. Uh, it's about 53 bucks for the cartridge if you buy the actual Delta cartridge to do it. Uh, this is an example of what the cartridge looks like. Uh, on the back side here, uh, these, uh, you have the ability to replace these O-rings, um, but I really wouldn't do that because if you just replace O-rings or you replace the springs and the seals, which I'll show you inside here once we get into it, ultimately you're going to be tearing this part again and replacing it again. Um, the uh, Delta Faucet uh, model number is uh, RP19804 for the replacement cartridge. Okay, one uh, RP19804. 804, that's the actual Delta replacement for the 1300, 1400 series. Uh, again, it's about 53 bucks. I am using this version of it right here. This is a Danco cartridge for Delta faucets. Uh, and it clearly says for 13 and 14 series on the package. This is about 35 bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot or, or any plumbing store. Um, the reason I didn't go with the actual replacement Delta part is I couldn't find it. The other thing that I will tell you is that if you go online to uh, Delta Faucets and you go to their warranty section, there is a 1-800 number you can call. They will create a case for you and they will actually send you this replacement part for free. You'll have it in three to, day, three to four days. My problem is, is that I'm very impatient. This shower drips, bangs down on the floor at night like someone beating a drum in my head. So I'm tired of it and I just want to replace it myself and get it done. The other problem with calling Delta, which I did try to be completely honest with you, I was on hold for about 30 minutes. Once I was finally speaking to a human being, they had to transfer me to the quote unquote shower department uh, and then my call was disconnected. So in my frustrations and not wanting to wait three or four days, I just decided to replace this myself. I remodeled this bathroom about seven years ago. I installed this faucet uh, and I've had no problems with it up until now, till I got this leaky shower head. So uh, hang tight, follow me along here. I'm gonna get some up close pictures for you and we'll talk about how to uh, tear this apart and replace it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the handle here. Uh, very simple, you have an Allen wrench, uh, you reach inside here and you're just going to loosen up the set screw that's inside the handle here. Sometimes. If you got hard water, uh, getting some of this loose can be a little bit tricky, uh, but just be gentle with it. You don't want to strip it out. You don't want to break it off because if you do, you're not going to get in there. Uh, that requires a whole nother set of uh, uh, problems. So anyway, you loosen up the set screw uh, and then you just gently uh, remove the handle off like so. On this particular version uh, of the Delta faucets, and it's not like this with all of them, but on the this particular single handle 1300, 1400 series, you have to remove this ring right here in order to get the parts off in order to remove the cartridge. So we're gonna use our Phillips head screwdriver. Also, uh, very important before you start this job, you want to turn your water off. That's a pretty important point that I 
didn't mention earlier, but make sure your water's shut off. Open up your sinks so you can let the water drain back down. That way when you pull this valve body out, uh, you're not taking a bath unintentionally. The other thing that some people uh, may wanna do here is uh, be sure you cover your drain uh, in your tub. My drain is far into the center of the shower here. It's an oversized uh, shower. So I don't have to worry about covering my drain, but it's always a good idea to do that. You don't wanna lose any hardware down the drain. Also, if you notice on here, uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but down here, this says multi-choice 14. So this 14 actually, actually represents that it's a 14 uh, series or a 1400 series Delta faucet. So we set that down there. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do uh, is remove this cap. This just gently slides off. Um, and you notice there's some holes in here. When you put this back on, you're gonna wanna take some pictures and align these holes because you're going to try and insert the screws through this ring. Uh, it, it, it's That's probably the hardest part of the job is getting that ring to line back up. As you notice on our shower here, this hole is kind of small. Uh, most showers is cut bigger. I probably should have cut that bigger when I did the shower install, but I didn't. And now, you know, I pay for it. So anyway, you remove this ring. You notice inside the ring, there's a little tensioner in here. That's what kind of holds it snug against the valve body. The next thing that we're going to do, uh, and I'll show you that in a minute, is you're going to have to remove this ring right here. So this screws on, and typically what you would have to do is use a pair of channel lock pliers to loosen that. Again, if you have hard water, this can be a little bit difficult. You just got to pamper it a little bit, be gentle. You don't want to mess it up. So uh, you're going to gently remove this ring, and you may want to wrap this in a, a washcloth or something so you don't scratch it up. Um, but the, the ring really isn't visible, so if you get some scratches on, it's not a huge deal. All right. All right, so we got our channel lock pliers here. We're going to get a good grip on this ring. And, uh, you know, ideally, it's uh, whatever kind of grip you can get on it to get it off. The thing that's important here is you don't want to squeeze this too hard and oblong this ring or damage the ring. Because when you put the new valve body back in here, the new cartridge, if this ring doesn't seat properly you're gonna have a leak, and that leak can potentially go behind your wall. So, uh, we just gently turn this ring like that. We're gonna bust it loose. We get the ring off. And then as you notice here, you can see how the valve body seats, or I'm sorry, the cartridge seats to the valve body. And then over here, you'll notice there's a little arrow, an angle. You're gonna to wanna to line that back up uh, with the new cartridge, just to ensure that it seats correctly. The other thing that I would recommend doing is taking some pictures before you start. Right here is a temperature adjustment on there. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little notch here. And you wanna pay attention to where this is at. Um, it, this is a graduated ring. You can spin this to a cooler setting or a hotter setting to avoid, avoid scalding and burning. Uh, mine is set at the hottest setting because uh, my wife, little mama, uh, she likes to melt her skin off when she takes a shower. So, all right, what I'm going to do here is we have to remove this little plastic cover right here. This slides off. And then once we remove that, we're going to remove this ring. And again, you're going to want to remember where this is set on your current cartridge because you're going to want to set the new cartridge to that point. All right, now looking at this here, I... Uh, Took the liberty of just getting this loose because this can be a little bit difficult to get out um, and sometimes what you have to do is put your handle back on okay uh, you put your handle back on the valve body tighten up the set screw or i'm sorry back on the cartridge tighten up the set screw and then use your handle to pull uh and and pull this cartridge out um you don't want to get on this plastic pieces with, with pair of channel locks or anything like that because you're just going to break it and it's going to become difficult to get out. Um, so anyway, I was able to get mine loose. And ta-da, there you have it. So this is the cartridge. And again, uh, this is the replacement. So what you want to do is be sure that when you put the replacement back in here, you're putting it in exactly like you took the old one out. Okay, um, the other thing that you're going to want to do is once you get that out, you're going to want to look down in here inside the valve body. 
Uh, and if you look inside the valve body, let me see if I can get you in there to see that. Back there is your hot and cold. You want to look inside those spaces and just make sure you don't have any deposits. Again, if you have hard water, you can have some mineral buildups uh, back in there that can uh, cause you a problem when putting the new cartridge in or even damage the new O-rings uh, that you're putting in. So um, we'll get back to it here. We're going to install the new cartridge now. Okay. So I just slid my new cartridge in. Okay. Uh, again, sometimes this can be a little tricky. Uh, you want to make sure that you slide the old cartridge in just like the new, uh, or I'm sorry, the new cartridge in just like the old cartridge came out. And again, if you notice these little grooves over here, these little triangles on the side of the new cartridge, there's one on both sides here, and those line up to uh, the valve body. So it's only going to go in that way. The other important thing is that you line up this temperature uh, adjustment here on the new cartridge like it was set on the old cartridge. Unfortunately on mine, mine, I, mine was set to the max and I can't for whatever reason, or I can't get this one to set to the max because this set screw here is in the way. Um, and I'm not gonna tinker with this set screw because even taking it out and reversing it the other way isn't really going to change how I can set this. So I got it to the hottest setting I can. Then you have to remember to place this disc back on and that just secures that in that position so it can't come forward and move, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is uh, replace our ring here, which this ring, again, holds the body in place. And uh, other important note, if you notice in here, there's a little rubber O-ring. You wanna make sure that this O-ring is in place when you seat this down. Again, keep in mind, when you take this coupling off here, you want to be careful. You take it off with a pair of channel locks, but you just you don't want to bend it or warp it because it will not thread correctly back on the valve body, and you will have a leak. Again, behind there is that rubber O-ring, and you want to ensure that that rubber O-ring is seated up to this ring when you tighten it up. Let me get my channel locks here, and I'm just going to give this a, just a snug up here. You don't, want to, you don't want to tighten it too hard. You just want to snug it up so it seats this new cartridge in place. Uh, and there you have it. So right now, you can turn your water back on, which is what I'm going to do. And you just want to make sure that you don't have any leaks. You want to look back behind here and make sure you're not leaking out from underneath the valve body uh, or the replacement cartridge because that would be dripping down behind your shower wall, which ultimately you'll find out about, but it'll be when it's a big problem, okay? So after we test this, we'll turn the water on, check the shower. Um, you're going to replace this. This slides over like so. Remember, you wanna line up these holes. So when you put your face plate back on, your two screws that secure the face plate uh, are, are able to go through these holes. It's a pain in the butt if you don't line this up. So once you get that on, you get the face plate on, um, you're pretty much done. All in all, a uh, pair of channel locks, a, flower, a, a Phillips head screwdriver, an Allen wrench, you could probably do this job in 15 minutes. Uh, maybe not even that long. Uh, again, if you have some hard water, it can give you a little bit of difficult time getting the parts apart, but um, don't be shy. Just give them a tug, and at some point, wiggle them back and forth a little bit. They'll come out. Um, so, I'm going to go uh, turn my water on, test my shower, make sure I don't have any leaks, and then we'll finish the assembly. All right, so I got my water turned back on. Uh, looking up under here, I have no leaks whatsoever. My ring is tight. Everything looks good. So I'm going to start putting this back together here. Once again, this is going to go on in here, and you're going to want to line these holes up, like I said. There's a little tensioner in there that's going to hold this secure in place. It just slides in just like that. You wanna check both sides just to make sure you got it right in place. And you seat that good, just like so. That makes it look nice.
And this, I'll tell you right here, this is the hardest part of the job. Getting these screws to line up in these holes. Because you can't really see what you're doing. There you have it, folks. Back together. Uh, be sure you check us out. Like and subscribe to the Savage Out Back. We do a lot of reviews on outdoor stuff. And uh, just keep in mind, uh, this is a very simple task. You can do this at home by yourself. And um, don't forget, drunk wives matter. And uh, once again, like and subscribe to the Savage Out Back. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while we did this.